Hello guys, this is Simon from writtenlegalenglish.com. I hope you had a look at the video on Tuesday and the tasks, the sentences that I asked you to redraft. If you need a reminder, these are they. The slide is an integral part of the pool hall. Rules and regulations for the swimming pool apply in addition to the hereby regulations. Immediately before launching, make sure there is running water in the flume. It is prohibited to attempt a dry ride. Sliding is done individually. The only allowed position sitting or lying on the back with the legs directed forward with the hands along the body. This position should be maintained throughout the slide. And I asked you to think about what is the real message and communicate that in a common sense way which is easily understandable and doesn't use anywhere near as many words as you can see on the screen. So let's take those one by one. The slide is an integral part of the pool hall. Well, I'm not going to read it out again, but what I will do is highlight some of the issues that I don't like about this. First of all, in business or professional or legal writing, sometimes we feel the need to add in adjectives that don't really need to be there. We think as writers, we need these adjectives and these adverbs because they add something to the sentence. Sometimes when you do that, you come up with a slightly ridiculous situation. For example, is the slide an, an integral part of the pool hall. If I remove the slide, will the pool hall fall down? Is that what I mean by integral? I mean, what does it exactly mean? It makes the first part of the sentence sound a little bit silly, and somehow it makes you think, okay, there might be some rules for this and not some rules for that. So it causes you to approach the sentence in a slightly strange way. And of course, We've got a serial offender in terms of legalese. Here it's the incorrect use of hereby. I've done another video on hereby. Have a look through my video history on YouTube and you'll be able to dig that out. So how would I redraft this? Well, I would redraft it like this. The slide is part of the pool hall and I could say therefore, I could introduce some kind of result clause or consequence clause which joins those two parts of the sentences together. So the slide is part of the pool hall and the rules and regulations for the swimming pool also apply to the rules below or something like that. So I'm saying simply speaking, this is part of this, which means the, those rules apply to these rules. That's essentially what the message is. So a redraft along those lines would be a better redraft. Okay, the second part is this. Immediately before launching, well, you can read it for yourselves behind me. What, did, what problems did I have with this? Well, first of all, immediately. Why only immediately? I would think if you go up the stairs and that the first thing you see is that there's no water on the slide, uh, that's not immediately before you launch, that's straight away you see there's a problem. So this this use, um, this, this word immediately in this context seems a little bit strange. Talking of strange, we've got launching. Um, do you really have to launch yourself down the slide? It rather suggests quite a lot of force or speed and perhaps given the context of a slide, it's perhaps not the wisest word to use. And then it says, make sure there is running water. Somehow that suggests it's your responsibility, that you somehow have control over this, that you have you can turn on the tap and water will start to run. So there's a slightly strange wording in there. And then we've got a common criticism of legal or business writing, and that's unnecessary use of technical terms. Flume. Of course, we're talking about the, the water slide. So why can't we just say water slide? Does, do we have to be technical? Do we have to say flume? And then a dry ride. Uh, so this is they. This is what they're describing a, as opposed to a wet ride. I guess uh, it just somehow seems a little bit unnecessary. So bearing all of those things in mind, I could simply say. You're not allowed to use this slide if there's no running water. Essentially, isn't that the main message? At least I think it is. If you disagree with me, leave a comment below. And then we've got that third comment, which is uh, wonderful. Uh, sliding is done individually and so on, so on. There's a number of things I could say about this, but I'll just 
stick to two, uh, one thing really, and that is Google. Now, if you are writing rules in English and you're writing rules about something, about something uh, that there will be rules in English offered by English companies or, or, or American companies and that these rules will be available on the internet, then a simple bit of research would allow you to improve upon something like this. This is what you might think of originally. Okay, this is what we've got to say. And then through the research part of uh, your writing, you would say, well, okay, what do they say in America? What do they say in England? What do they say in Australia? And let's go onto those websites and let's do a bit of research and let's find out what they say. And if that research process was done, you would quickly find out that no native English speaking country would ever say anything like this. In fact, in most cases, what you'll see is pictures. And that uh, the pictures will show you clearly what you can and you can't do. But of course, these are terms and conditions, so something has got to be written down. So if you had a look at those English, American, Australian terms and conditions, you might have come up with something like this. Only one person can use the slide at a time. That's the normal sentence, at least if you have a look at the English swimming pools. Then I've highlighted something. Please wait for the signal and then specify what that signal will be before using the slide. And then when sliding, you must either sit or lie down with your legs pointing forward and keep your arms by your sides. So something along those lines is a lot easier to understand than the only allowed position sitting or lying, la 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 la. I've highlighted that bit in orange because as part of the research process, one thing that you might identify is that other people, other com uh, countries, other swimming pools in other countries, also say something else at precisely this point. So you might also think, maybe this is a good idea to say something about this and not put it somewhere else. And that is to say, you can, own, you can say how many people can use the slide, and then when you can use the slide, which is this added information here, there's a signal of some kind. And then how you must behave when you're on the slide. So the point I'm trying to make here is if you do your research, if you have a look at what's out there on the Internet already, you will already be one step closer to writing a more authentic and then more communicative text. OK, guys, there was a lot of information in that video for you to think about. Uh, one other thing I want you to think about or that you may have already thought about, and that's the video that I posted on Wednesday, which was unit one of my course of how to improve your professional English writing skills. If you guys liked that video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments, so please leave a comment below. And if you haven't checked out my Patreon site, then please go ahead and do that, and you'll be able to see the kind of things that I'm offering on there. Okay, guys, I'll see you again next week with another set of sentences for you to redraft and another teaching video.